Hello and welcome to a, another webinar on the SketchUp workflow for garden and landscape design. This is the third in a series of four and today we're looking at modeling for detailing. The previous sessions have covered setting up SketchUp and uh, layouts with a view to making sure that they act as templates and they've got all of your preferred settings, icon positions and um, graphic styles so that you don't have to reconfigure them every time you start a new project. The second session um, concentrated on building from scratch um, a simple backyard configuration which was representative of your idea which you would then want to present to a client and it created a presentation mass model rather than anything that was significantly detailed we indicated detail through adding objects which we brought in from the 3d warehouse and texture but we really were concentrating on the intent of the design rather than the actual detail and that's what we're going to look at today we're going to build on that um, same model and we're going to try and pull together a couple of construction details by building over um, our presentation model. So I will show you the uh, simple workflow and hopefully um, by the end of this session uh, you'll have an understanding of a method of creating construction detailing. So I'm just going to switch over. to my SketchUp window. Okay. And here we're looking at the um, SketchUp model that we uh, were left with at the end of our session two. I've spent uh, an extra half an hour pulling it together. So there's a few additional features in here. Um, the biggest one um, I think you'll probably notice is that we've now got a pergola. I was thinking of some additional detailing that would um, make an interesting case for putting together um, a, a construction detail. And we're gonna work on the anchor plate for this pergola. And to show you what the difference is between this and the previous one, um, I've increased the length of the um, panels down the side, added some textures to the house, brought in things like bifold doors, added a roof, and you can see some nice little lanterns that I have brought in from the 3D warehouse, but really didn't spend too much time in here. Oh, and I think um, the coping um, is what I also added. But we're gonna focus on working on the construction. So I'm just going to switch off the ground layer and you can now see the detail that I have started to develop for the pergola. And it's really the same simple design repeated down the garden. We've got a concrete block, which is just a rectangle um, that is supporting a steel bracket and then just some simple six inch by six inch 150 millimeter posts. Um, they're the same both sides with a cross member at the top. So um, I'm going to pick on the bracket. I'm going to copy it, come out of the group, and then paste it. And I'm just going to drag it off to the side. And that way, when I set up my drawings, I'm hopefully not going to get any of the existing geometry um, in the background. And to make sure of that, I'm going to switch off um, the tags for the pergola. So I'm going to zoom extents and I'm going to set this component up as a three dimensional textured image so that this will become the illustration on the drawing sheet of uh, for all the other elevations. So the first thing I'm going to do is view and I'm going to switch off Oops, sorry, not view, camera, perspective. And then I'm going to go to my standard views and select ISO. And then I'm going to add shadows. 
And I'm just going to switch the shadows off the ground. And I'm quite happy with that. So we're going to view animation, add scene. And I'm going to create a new scene and I'm going to rename it plate ISO. So keep it quite simple. Whilst I'm here, I'm now going to set up the other elevations and I can really do those by clicking through on my standard views. I don't need it to be textured and I certainly don't need shadows. So I'm going to switch those off using the style icons palette. And that gives me the um, plan view. So I'm going to create a scene, which is, we'll call that plates plan. And I'm going to go to the next view. So I'm going to call that one front. So view animation, add scene, rename uh, plates front. And one more, and this will be our side. So view, um, whoops, animation, add scene, rename plate side. And we're there. We've set up our principal elevations. Excuse me, I've got something in my eye. Right. And we can now take those through to layout where we're going to set them up. So I'm just going to send to layout. Um, there's a little icon at the bottom of your large tool set. You need to save before you go. Um, otherwise, it won't let you. It will give you a prompt. And so I sent a layout and I'm just going to choose from my templates. And then I'm going to uh, share that screen with you. And here we are, we're now in layout. So this has brought through um, the components onto a viewport. And that viewport is a representation of the viewport that was open in SketchUp. And I'm going to right hand click over my viewport. And right at the bottom, I'm going to set the scale. And um, at the moment, the scale is currently set at 1 to 2.64 something. And I'm just going to make it a bit smaller. So I'm going to go 1 to 3, which looks fine. I think I can work with that. I'm going to resize my viewport by dragging the side handles and then just pushing that up into the top corner so that it gives me space around the rest of the drawing sheet for laying out the rest of my elevations. So I'm simply um, going to move my mouse into my viewport. And as I do so, it move, changes to the move icon. And then when I hit my um, control or alt key, I can then drag a copy. And whoops try that again. There we are. So when I've selected the viewport, I can then scroll down and pick scenes. And in this case, I want plate front. And it copies the attributes of the um, viewport that I've pasted. So if that one was set at one to three, this one is set at one to three. And I'm going to drag out a copy to the side and set that to plate side. And then I'm going to drag one underneath. And I'm going to set that to plate plan. And that looks quite good. So I'm just going to give these a little bit more space. And I'm ready to give it some dimensions. So these are real dimensions, there's no scaling involved. So I'm just putting in some principal edges. It's defaulting to meters because that's what my uh, template is, but I will change these to millimeters. So um, I might want to add a detail from edge to center point.
and I might want to add uh, some dimensions that really capture the position of the holes in the corner but it would be a bit cramped by to put these dimensions into this elevation so if I select my elevation and make a copy and then reset the scale of that maybe to one to two it gets bigger um, I'm then going to crop out a corner of it by drawing a shape over it selecting that shape and then holding down the shift key and selecting the viewport and then right at the bottom i can um, create a clipping mask and there is my um a clipped geometry and What I'm going to do now is um, dimension up this enlarged view. So if I go to my dimension tool, I can pick an edge and the dimension, and likewise an edge and a dimension, and it's not cluttering up this part of the drawing. My dimensions look uh, quite chunky in their typeface so I can select them all. Uh, the ones I can't select or I miss then just hold down the shift key and if I go into my fonts or my type tool I can just choose any typeface I want. Um, I'm going to choose an 11 or 12 and the other thing whilst all these are selected if I go into my dimension style tool which is under window, um, toolbar, well, it's a window, it's a toolbar on a Mac and it's under default tray under PCs. So at the moment it's set to meters, so I'm just gonna select millimeters. And they've all been placed. I can add some labels, so I might call this front view, etc. So I can move that around as a standard text box, but I can also add labels and those are text boxes with leader lines. So for instance, that might be eight millimeter plates and this one down here might be 15 millimeter plate. And then I could add notes about through holes and um, what the diameter of this uh, tube is. So this is 70 millimeter um, diameter tube. And then we've got notes that maybe we add about the welding and drainage holes for galvanizing, etc. cetera. Um, I'm noticing that the outline of my geometry is the same weight as the leader lines on my labels. So I'm going to pick all of my geometry boxes and I'm going to go back to my SketchUp model window and near the top it says line scale and by default it's set to 0.5. So I'm just going to make it a bit heavier and I'm going to start at one and actually that looks quite good. It's made the lines thicker and bolder and I'll go with that. Now, in essence, that's the drawing. I could add uh, more notes. I could add a little bit more of a specification, but it would just be repeating the same actions. So the process is really to get in one viewport and then copy and paste those into place. And you can then use those to capture the scenes that you set up in SketchUp. So now I'm gonna go back to SketchUp and we're gonna set up an alternative construction detail. So I'm going to go back to my model. Okay. Um, I'm going to put my steel foot plate onto its own tag. Um, and that's already switched off. So there we are back with the, um, the working scene. And I'm just gonna switch off the pergola. I'm gonna switch on another layer. 
Um, and I was playing with it earlier, so I just need to move these out of the way. And what I also have brought in is some really simple, basic geometry. And these are just cubes, rectangles, and I've just given them a texture. So if I looked at the textures, you can see that they're made to look like brick or concrete block. Um, I've got one that looks, if you use your imagination, a bit like a land drain or a concrete foundation. But these are really just rectangles with some colors and textures painted on them. And what I'm going to do is use these to build a construction detail on the front face. And it's really very simple. Um, I have these as standard elements. I've probably got 40 or 50 of them and um, I keep adding to them and they sit on an, uh, a layer within my SketchUp session. And when I need to do the construction detailing, I just open them up, line them up a bit like Lego bricks and then just build my details. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I've got a rectangle here that is 600 by 600 by 25. And so it represents a paving slab. And I'm just going to drag a corner and stick it so that it's at the right level. And then I'm going to pick this rectangle here. And that is my coping stone. And it's slightly different to the coping stone that I've got in my model because I looked around very quickly and I found that there are some, several manufacturers doing copings at about 400 millimeters which is what this coping stone is. If we decide to change that later, it doesn't really matter, but I will need to just update my model. And next thing is I'm gonna put my facing stone in. So that's these two elements. And I'm just gonna drag those and put them in place. And that was pretty good first time. So just drag it up a little. What I've done here is um, these were new, so I created them for this session. And if I switch textures on, you can just about see my outline. But all I did was take my freehand drawing tool and draw around some of these sort of uh, rubble stone effects. And then I simply brought them forward and apply the texture. So really nothing fancy. Uh, I didn't really spend any time on it, but you can probably tell. Now, um, I've got these three elements, paving, coping, and walling in. So I can probably switch off my, um, wherever my ground is, there we are. So those are in place. So it's going to be relatively easy and quite quick to construct the rest of this feature. Um, I'm going to bring in some concrete blocks. So I'm just going to grab those and simply put them underneath my coping. And if I can get them into position. They're not playing. Now I need to move this down of an additional 10 millimeters, so 0 0.01, and it's now intruding into the um, facing stone. So I'm just gonna nudge that across, and then I'm probably gonna move it across 0 0.03, so it's got a 30 millimeter cavity between the two. And it looks like that's enough concrete blocks because my concrete block is going just below ground level. So I'm now going to go and get my main concrete foundation. And I'm just going to put that into place. And it's not the right size, so I just need to resize it. So I'm going to double click and push, pull, and touch the front face. And then I'm going to drag it forward 0.1. So that my, try that again. Uh, point one, that's better. So now my footing um, is wider by 100 millimeters than my front face, and I'm going to do the same at the back. 
and I also need to just move it down 0 0.01. So I've got a 10 millimeter gap uh, for my mortar. Now it could be that um, we agree with the contractor that we need 150, even 200 millimeters worth of um, additional width on our foundation. And we can adjust the, the, um, the details later. My concrete block, my foundation is 150 millimeters as a standard. It might be deeper. It's unlikely to be less. So I've got some of the elements in place. Um, I need to bring in my vertical drainage board. So I'm just going to bring that over. And that's gone in. And the uh, next thing is I'm going to bring in my land drain. And that's just going to sit approximately in that location. Um, I might use my uh, reinforcing mesh. I'm not sure if this foundation needs reinforcing, but I'm going to include it just so that it's in the drawings and we can discuss it if we need to. And one more thing, and that's this little detail here. And this is a wall tie. So I didn't model this, I brought it in from the warehouse, but I'm just gonna put it in to the model. Um, I just need to raise it up a fraction and maybe bring it across. Yep, that'll do. And that's because um, we may need, to, we will need to tie the front and the back wall together. We can do that several ways, but the wall tie is at least symbolic of um, the ways we might do it. And I think that's it. We've got all our details in place. So what I'm going to do now is what I did with the metal bracket is set up an isometric view. So for this, I'm going to switch on my textures and my shadows switch off the ground shadow and I'm going to go to my camera and switch off perspective and put it into isometric view. So that's going to be my illustration. So I'm going to capture that by going view animation, add scene, uh, save it as a new scene and rename it. And we're going to call that wall ISO. Now I could do a cross section through this, um, but I don't really need to because a cross section is designed to look down through something so that you can see the way it's constructed. And in this case, I can already see how it's constructed, but it is useful to have that cross section style view. So when I'm building these items like this, what I'm doing is coloring one end of them with a cross hatch and this cross hatch is a texture within sketchup and it's under patterns in the um the paint bucket so i'm going to switch off my shadows and then i'm going to go to a standard elevation so this is an end elevation and that is my cross section it's got some texture in but most of the texture is actually the black and white texture so I'm going to capture that view animation, add scene. I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call that wall cross section. And we're ready almost to go back to layout. So I'm going to go to file save so that we don't get uh, or lose anything. And I'm now going to go back to layout. I don't need to send to layout again because I sent some components, the steel ones all through, and I can copy and paste those and then convert that view to the view of my walling. But you'll see that now. So I'm just going to go to layouts. And we're back in layout and I'm going to um, duplicate this page. So um, pages is um, a window that just records the number of sheets that you've got in your drawing session. You can have, 
think, as many as you want, or it will probably go up to something like 999. So I'm going to duplicate simply because I want to capture one of these um, viewports. I could have copied a viewport and pasted it into a new sheet, um, but I'm just going to delete everything that I don't need. Um, and I'm left with a viewport. And if I now um, update model reference, I thought it might do that. So just bear with me. Okay, um, I've just um, uh, reset that. So this um, is the viewport that um, if I go to my styles, whoops. If I go, oh dear, I seem to have a slight error on there. So let me just, okay, I was uh, a little bit trigger happy. So now um, this is, um, I've just repeated the last process. And now I've got the scenes relative to my um, SketchUp model. And I can access the new ones that I've added, which relate to the wall. So this is the wall isometric. And I'm just going to drag that uh, to one side. Um, I can pick the scale. It's 1 to 8.49. So maybe I'm going to go 1 to 10. I'm going to resize my window uh, over here. And then I'm just going to drag a copy of this window across in exactly the same way we did for the steel bracket. And I'm going to go down to my scenes and I can go to my wall cross section. And there's my elevation looking at the end of this wall. Um, I could resize that, uh, maybe give it one to eight, just bring it up a little bit. And this one is relatively simple because there's not that much to detail, very few dimensions. I might have a dimension from the coping down to the, um, the finished floor level. I might have a width on my foundation. Um, I might put a label on my foundation that says something like um, footing. And I might say 150 millimeters. Um, and I might say something like uh, RC uh, 28 to 35. And that just indicates it's made of concrete and it's a concrete that's specific for reinforcing. So there may be reinforcing, there may not. Um, I might have a reference for my coping. So I don't need to dimension the coping if I say that it's 400 by 600 by 35 millimeters. And then I might put a reference um, to my favorite stone supplier and um, whatever stone it is that I um, prefer. I might also have a note here that says something like 30 millimeters um, nosing. So it's an overhang at the front that I might need to specify. I've got a, um, a uh, vertical drainage board, so vertical drainage board, and then obviously I might have a reference for that, whatever that might be. We're going to be using some kind of facing stone, so I'm going to need to identify facing stone, etc. So you simply build up your references by adding labels, and then you can change your fonts as we did with the previous one. Um, not much more to do on this. What I would point out is that um, as the design develops, then your SketchUp model will evolve. So if I want to change the facing stone or change the coping, then I would change it in the SketchUp model. And when I change it in the SketchUp model and come into layout, the update it should update automatically if it doesn't then simply right hand click and update uh, model reference and it will change your drawing to reflect the changes you've made in sketchup 
So your SketchUp model will change. And as it's changing, you're going to be saving it. So your SketchUp model is fluid. You're not saving out copies all the time. And your layout model will follow the SketchUp changes. So when your drawing changes, you will then save layout. Now, the output from um, layout um, is, well, you can choose what it's going to be, but I would select something like a PDF drawing sheet. So I would simply say File, Export, and I'm going to pick PDF. And then I'm going to give it options. So I'm going to choose, um, in this case, I've, I've only got you know, the one sheet that I've selected. So from one to one, <coughs> my output resolution is going to be high, which just gives me a better quality. And I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to say save. So I just need to make sure that I save it into the right area. And I'll just call this test drawing. And I'm going to hit save. There we go. And there it appears. Um, so this has automatically appeared in um, Adobe Acrobat because I've told it to. And I can just check it before I send it. So when I send it out, I will give this a name. So instead of just calling it test drawing, I might call this um, uh, Mrs. Jones's garden or Jones garden. And then I will give it a reference number. And at the end of the reference number, I will give it an issue number. So dash A. And the next time um, there is a change to this, I will then keep exactly the same name when I'm saving the PDF and I'll call it B and then C and D, et cetera. So that I end up with an archive of old issues that are recorded by PDF. Now you could choose to save out your layout model and your SketchUp model at each of those subsequent changes. But um, I don't really see much of a point to that unless you're working um, on a much larger collaborative project where you need to manage your updates. So in most instances um, for landscape and garden work, then just recording the PDF um, subsequent issues is enough. So I'm just going to close that down. Um, I think that's it. I really um, don't want to go into too much more detail. Layout, I'm only just touching on. Uh, there are lots of aspects that you can improve your workflow and you can actually save these drawings into layout so that you don't even have to go through the whole process of setting them up again. You can archive them and then immediately retrieve them and edit them on a project by project basis. So that becomes very effective. And it gets a little bit different when we're doing things like planting plans but nevertheless, there is a semi-automation involved. I hope that you've uh, got some insight from this. Uh, maybe it's inspired you to have a go or approach it in a slightly different way. Um, I've very much enjoyed um, showing you how I work. And tomorrow I'm going to be looking not so much at the modeling, but at using um, some of the plugins and extensions. And um, it would be great if you could join me, but these will be recorded. So I hope that they provide some benefit for you. Thank you once again and enjoy your modeling. <laughs>